Hello, I think that we are live. So that's good. And I have my sparkling water ready. So we must be ready to begin. Thank you for joining me today. This is going to be a fun topic, even though it's laundry. Um, laundry isn't always the most thrilling and sometimes it's downright discouraging or at least we can definitely feel that way. But I hope that through this workshop today, we'll see that while we are doing our laundry, we can even be learning about ourselves and about our responsibilities and about God and um, return again every laundry cycle to the cycle of learning and growing, repenting, rejoicing, and recognizing that that's really what it's all about. It's not about getting to a certain level, achieving a certain state, crossing things off. It's really about faithfully fulfilling what we are called to do, however small, however seemingly insignificant, and however often it turns out that we have to do the same thing over again. So that's like this workshop in a nutshell. <laughs> that was the brief summary version of what we're going to spend the next about half an hour to 45 minutes talking about. So I'm glad that you're here with me today. And um, feel free to chat in the comments and leave questions. I'm not sure whether or not I'll have time to get to the questions uh, in this workshop, but I often use those questions as blog post ideas or future troubleshooting session ideas. So feel free to pop those in there. Um, and the other cool thing about the ask a question section is that actually everyone can participate in answering those questions. If you leave a question there, anyone can leave a comment. So if you have a particular like tactical, logistical, nitty gritty question that comes to mind as we're working on this, you can pop it in there and you can also see when there is a question there and go see if you have an idea or an encouragement or something to share with the person who's leaving the question there because that's one of the great things about this, I don't know, venue here is that you guys are chatting there and I'm talking here, but we can actually all of us also interact in that question area because I don't need to be the only one answering questions, right? We can all be pitching in and helping each other learn and grow and uh, invest ourselves in our duties, in our responsibilities, in our callings at home. So that's what we're going to do together today. And um, yes, the other, I guess, logistical housekeeping sort of detail is that if you do end up having sound problems or uh, video problems during the workshop, if you hit reload, that fixes it about 90% of the time. So just hit reload if you have any issues while watching the event. And if I have technical issues, I'll hit reload and I'll be back in a minute. But that hasn't happened in a while. So I think for the most part, we are ready, except for the fact that we might need another sip of coffee. Okay. And yes, I see that some of you are actually in the middle of tackling your laundry. So how appropriate is that, right? <laughs> so um, what do we think of when we think of laundry? Um, how many times have we come up with various plans, tactics, ideas to overcome our laundry issues. It seems like just as soon as we figure out a way to conquer the laundry, you know, quote unquote, conquer the laundry, something changes and our system that we did have working is no longer working. 
And so we kind of have this, these unresolved issues or these unresolved uh, maybe emotional baggage or bitterness or resentment towards laundry because we want a system because it's such a major part of our responsibilities at home. You know, it's like second right after food. It's right up there with what we're supposed to be doing. And so we, we are trying to do it well and to do it regularly. And it's very hard to do sometimes without resenting the work, without feeling like maybe it's beneath us or that it's something that we just aren't good at, we just don't like. And so we, we end up doing laundry in this cycle of maybe even despising the laundry or re at least resenting it, being bitter about it. And we use the laundry cycle to reinforce our thoughts and our attitudes about um, our, our distaste for laundry every time we do it. And that's what we end up reinforcing in our own minds and it becomes a habitual pattern of thinking. And so then that actually makes laundry itself a worse job, not because the amount of the work has changed, but because we have made it feel heavier and harder than it is by the story that we're telling ourselves in our own heads while we're doing it. So we actually kind of make it harder on ourselves than it needs to be. Sometimes even in the midst of trying to figure out how to make it easier on ourselves, which is really what coming up with some kind of laundry habit or laundry system is about making it easier. It's about figuring it out and doing it right and doing it in such a way that we've mastered it in some way. Somehow we've gained control over the laundry because it's so easy to slip into patterns where it feels like the laundry is controlling us or at least the fact that someone doesn't have socks or underwear <laughs> is now we are at the mercy of laundry and people's needs because it it is something that takes multiple steps, right? It's not just like, okay, I'll do the laundry and 10 minutes later, ta-da. There are so many steps along the way to get from dirty clothes to clean clothes and we get distracted and um, we just, there are many opportunities in that cycle to get um, hung up to to stop the process to have it not work efficiently and smoothly like we feel like this should be something that i can get into a logical efficient maybe even autopilot kind of method for laundry it seems like that must be possible and that we're doing it wrong or we haven't found that magic solution that will help us once and for all get on top of laundry. Because that's what we really want, is we want to get on top of it because so often it feels like the laundry is on top of us. And um, what we need to recognize as we do workout systems and as we do try to make our processes more efficient, we have to look at our expectations and see if there's something out of line there. If, if the way that we are operating is not lining up with reality, not just the reality of our situation or our season of life, that's a real part of our reality, but even the reality of just the way God made the world to work. Are we working with that? Or are we trying to make the world work a different way, a way that we want it to work, which isn't the way that it is working. And that is perhaps a cause of our um, bad attitudes and our discontent and our resentment. We need to look at our expectations. And it's very easy to get into the task-based mentality 
and uh, define getting on top of laundry as being done. We just want to be done with the laundry. And that doesn't necessarily sound wrong, uh, especially if we do phrase it some way, like get on top of it. Like that seems like it should be possible. But if we dig deeper, a lot of times I think we find that what we are really looking for and trying for is to finish it, like check it off, right? We just want to get it checked off our list. And laundry is one of those things that kind of defies our checklists because uh, it's multiple steps. It's not just one checklist sort of thing. You've got to gather the laundry, sort the laundry, wash the laundry, move it to the dryer, get it dried, get it folded, get it put away. You could break that down into a lot of steps. So it's hard to put it onto a checklist. And then the thing is, how many times does that need to be on your checklist? Um, if you're doing one laundry day a week, like Monday is laundry day, how many loads, how many check boxes do you need for all the laundry? And once you like figure that out, it's gonna be different pretty soon because maybe some kids start puking or there's some accident or you go to the park and there's mud and everyone, like the variables that determine our laundry are outside of our predictable like scope of control. Um, so when we look at laundry, it's something that's not easily tamed to our list. And that's one reason why we end up not liking it. Um, and then once we do check it off, if we do check it off and we're done, we look around, you know, 12 hours later and the hampers are not full. And it turns out that this is a cycle that we just have to keep repeating over again. And so then that feels frustrating because we thought it was done. And we know that there's going to be more laundry, but sometimes maybe it's part of helping ourselves feel better about it or rewarding ourselves, or it's still just trying to get to that expectation of being done that we let ourselves think of it as I'm done. And then we're mad when it turns out we're not actually done. Like there's still laundry to do. And that's just the way it is. Um, and so our expectations around laundry end up being uh, false and out of line with the actual nature of laundry. Now, this workshop is actually about how life is like laundry. So we aren't talking so much about only laundry here, and we're not going to um, solve the laundry problem. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and I'm not also going to say that it's unsolvable, although that is a temptation when we get stuck in this cycle to think, well, never mind, I can't conquer this, I can't finish it, and so I'm gonna stop trying, I'm gonna stop caring, and of course that doesn't help our attitude either. And so we start, you know, we unravel some of our thoughts about laundry and then think, wait a sec, you're gonna tell me that life is like that? Like, <laughs> what did I sign up for and can I unenroll? Please let me off the bus. And never mind, this is not what I wanted this all to be like. And of course, that's not an option. And that kind of response, though, if we feel that frustration, that discouragement, that, you know, this isn't what I wanted it to be, feelings, when we feel those feelings well up, that is a good reminder that we need to stop and address our hearts and our thoughts and our goals even and make sure that they are lined up with scripture, 
with God's calling on our lives and with the reality of the way the world that God created and put us in actually works. And when that doesn't line up with the way we wanted it to work, we don't actually need a new system to make it work the way we would like it to work. We need to recognize we are the problem here, not the laundry. And it's not only our expectations then, but it's ourselves, it's our goals. Our problem is that we want to control this situation. We can imagine a scenario or a life where everything just clips along, going our way, um, things are happening on time, on plan, and we are orchestrating everything and on top of it, and it's all working smoothly. We can sit and we can plan, <laughs> by which we mean imagining such a wonderful world. And then we try putting those plans, those imaginary way the world might work if everything worked my way type plans into reality and it's like crash and burn. And then our temptation is to just say, well, planning doesn't help. Planning only makes things worse, makes me feel worse, doesn't work, whatever, because what we want is for things to go our own way. But what we have to realize is that we don't control the way the world works and we can't set up systems that change the way the world works and that that's actually a good thing. That's not a problem and that's not a flaw. Our responsibility in our home is not to make everything go our way. But how often is that what we're actually trying to do? Our role in our home is to faithfully live a life of obedience and trust and faith. And that's not unrelated to the laundry, to the dishes, to the meals, to the kids. Uh, those aren't interruptions and those aren't material for us to work with, although they are materials that God uses to work on us with. So we tend to see those things in our life, those responsibilities, especially the ones that are just the stuff, right? We know that we aren't controlling other people, at least hopefully we know that. At least on paper, we know we would say that. But the dishes, the laundry, the dusting, the vacuuming, all those kind of chores, stuff, work. We think that it's our job to extend our control and our vision upon those things. When it's a, it's a little bit flipped, not exactly flipped, but a little bit more flipped. Those responsibilities are given to us for us to control ourselves, not control the things. They are opportunities for service, for humility, for obedience, for loving others, for loving God, and for putting others' needs and interests before our own. So then we find that as we are working our day-to-day -day chores, what's actually happening is not us extending our domain, our kingdom, and making our own little kingdoms inside of our house where we exert control and things work our way. It's an area where we are able to live under the dominion of Christ and his providential care and recognize that, yeah, those wet sheets that I wasn't expecting and wasn't necessarily wanting, the, you know, whatever, the spilled milk, the 
crusty oatmeal smeared underneath the table. <laughs> These things aren't areas where my control and my system and my standards are being threatened. These are just opportunities given here for me to humble myself, do what I ought to do, and live in this real world that was created for God's glory and not my glory. So I can have the heart of a servant and I can do these menial tasks because it's not about having things go my way. It's about doing the small acts of obedience and love and service that God has placed right in front of me. So obvious and like needful right there. And yet we so often turn those things to feel resentful about them when those are the, the moments that we are giving up our own desires and submitting to God's will instead of our own. Those are the moments of sanctification in our lives. Uh, when, when the things don't go our way is much more likely to be the time we are being sanctified. It's going to be much more effective sanctification than if everything did go the way we wanted it to be. Did go the way we wanted it to go. Um, if everything did go our own way, we would not be, um, it would not actually be good for us because we are not holy and we are not good and we are not perfect. So even though we sometimes think that our ideas of the way things ought to be are good and right and true, the reality is that we ourselves are not good and right and true. And so what's more important than having a house and systems that are pure and upright is that God uses the situations that are happening in our life to sanctify and purify us. And that's a much more important work than even the house actually being clean. So it's not that we don't care about the state of the house, but that we recognize the, the priority of goals that are actually happening there and that we align our goals with God's goals. And God's very clear in scripture that his will for us is our sanctification. So he cares more about your sanctification than about the state of your house. And then also it says, God has prepared good works in advance for us to walk in. God's prepared them not us. So they are often not the works we would have picked for ourselves, but they're prepared and they're right in front of us. Most of the time as moms, the good work that we are called to do is actually so easy to, it's right in front of us. We don't have to go looking. We have to do what's right in front of us, but sometimes we would rather go looking. <laughs> but when we just walk in faithfulness with what's right in front of us, um, we find God opening other doors, but we also find that that is the path of um, joy and real fulfillment is recognizing what's actually going on here in the home is um, sanctification. And that's so much deeper and richer than a checked off checklist or systems that are working so smoothly that so smoothly that nobody needs to be good, right? That's a line, that's not quite the line. The line of poetry, I think, hmm, let me remember, I think it's T.S. Eliot, uh, where he has a line in one of his poems, dreaming of systems so perfect that nobody needs to be good. And a lot of times that's what we are after when we are looking at solutions for laundry or for meal planning or whatever, is we want a system that will just work without us. The system will do the work, so we don't actually have to work anymore. But God's prepared good works for us to do. Like working isn't a problem. Um, the system 
can make things, we can set up systems that can make things smoother and easier and, you know, help us get things done, but it's still always us that will be doing the work. So if we're working on systems that will make it so we don't have to work anymore, that is, again, we are out of line with our actual responsibilities, our actual calling and the way the world actually works. So it will always be frustrated. And that will be good for us. <laughs> and, uh, and also those systems, so perfect. On the one hand, you can think of it as nobody needs to work because the systems are doing the work. But on the other hand, it's so that nobody needs to be good. And that's really where the systems, the checklist can come into our lives and do good instead of be frustrating is where we can see that list as um, not as binding, but as a, this is, um, these are my responsibilities that I'm to fulfill right now. And this is the, the scope that I've been given today. And this is, this is an area for me to have self-control in because there are days and there are definitely times where I don't get to what's on the to-do list because something else more urgent came up. And so I was dealing with that instead of this. Like that's good. That's life, that's exercising wisdom and doing you know, the good work that's in front of you to do. But just as often, more often, I don't know, I look at my to-do list for the day and think, well, I don't really have to. So I don't think I will because I don't have to. So I'm just going to decide not to just because I don't really want to. And so there I am letting my self-indulgent self, my, my inner two-year-old really have reins, have the control and saying, well, I'm not going to do it. Not because there's something more important that came up and displaced it, but because I don't want to. Our to-do list, though, can serve to parent that inner two-year-old that says, I don't want to. You think, well, too bad. Too bad for you. I didn't ask you what you wanted. There's absolutely no reason that you can't, you know, go do this thing right now. Do it. And that's growing in self-control, in um, exercising wisdom and strength and taming that inner two-year-old that we really all have. Um, so, so what use are our systems, our to-do lists, our planners, and all of that? Uh, it's not so that we exercise control over our situation. It is so that we can exercise self-control, not situation control, not control of other people or stuff or the situation that we find ourselves in. It's there as a tool to help us grow in self-control. That's a fruit of the spirit. It's a good work and it is faithful obedience. And, and as we exercise that self-control, we see sanctification happening, right? Because that is growth of the fruit of the spirit in us. And so the other fruits of the spirit come alongside also. Um, joy, peace, patience. They, they all come together and work together. And so we need to see our duties at home. What we know we have to do like the laundry, the dishes, the meals, the floors, the bloody noses, the math, tutoring, help. We can see those as opportunities to die to our selfish self, our own inner two-year-old, and live for God doing what he's placed before us. And that's sanctification. And that's his will for us, is really the sanctification. So these other things are tools, yes, for us to love others with, but it's also a tool God is using in our own lives. And that's of a much 
uh, greater worth and longer effect than the laundry. So even though the laundry will again have to be done tomorrow, the dishes will have to be done tomorrow, all these things will have to be done tomorrow, um, sanctification is also going to have to be done tomorrow. And we can rejoice in knowing that that's the purpose that that's what's got that that is what God is doing and we can be we can rejoice not because it always is like feels happy but because we know that that's worthwhile and we know that he is controlling orchestrating all of this for our good and his glory and that good is sanctification making us more and more Christ like and that's not going to be done just like the laundry is not going to be done that's not going to be done until glory then it will be done <laughs> so someday there will be an end mark for the laundry i don't know do you think I, we won't get into whether or not there's going to be laundry in heaven could there be dirt i don't know i have a son who probably thinks it wouldn't be heaven without dirt, but <laughs> we won't get into speculative theology here. Um, but that work of sanctification is the work that um, Christ is doing, that the Holy Spirit's doing in us every day, day by day, that is working toward an end goal, but it's never gonna be the sort of thing where we say, okay, phew, made it over that hump. Now we're good to go. But that's what we keep looking for is the, the system that works without us working or that being on top of the laundry. We also sometimes want to be on top of ourselves or this thing that we need to overcome within ourselves. But we need to recognize that we aren't looking for the time in the middle of our lives where now we're going to have it all together. Now we're going to have it all under control. And from here on out, you know, smooth sailing, we at least mastered this onto the next thing or whatever, or from here, I'll be able to do anything. Not actually the way it works. The way it actually works is that we realize, that, like the more we're sanctified, the more we realize how much more sanctification we need. We become more and more aware of our need and our sin and so we become more and more aware of our need to repent over and over again. And so it does, it's not the sort of thing where it gets easier and easier. Although, I mean, in a sense, we get used to it. We get good at it. But it's not the sort of thing that we grow out of and don't need anymore. It's the sort of thing we, the more we do it, the more we realize we need it. And the more we see our deficiencies and our inadequacies, and our faults and our sin. And so sometimes being more aware of it feels worse than when we're just blithely going along doing our own thing in ignorance and thinking we've kind of got it together. But that's actually the, the path and the way of wisdom and walking with God. Like if you're walking with God, you're not gonna think that you're doing so hot right? Because what, what are our examples in scripture of people who meet with God? <laughs> what are their responses? It's like, I am undone. So when we feel undone, that's good. That's good for us because that shows us exactly where we need to be. And from there, we can um, experience God's strength instead of our own we can grow in Christ-likeness, in holiness, in recognizing our need for forgiveness. And that's a good work being worked in us by the Holy Spirit. So um, yeah, yeah, we have a testimony here that even in the empty nest phase, the grandparent phase, you still have an inner toddler. But we, so we think, I mean, the two-year-old, right, grows up, so even when we're parenting like an actual two-year-old, we have this hope, like he's not going to be two forever or three. Sometimes three is harder than two. 
but um, you know, eventually they will be 10. And then they'll be 12 again, 12, which is kind of the same. But anyway, we will always have our inner two-year-old. It's true. We aren't looking for the like success, just like we aren't looking for the laundry being done. We aren't looking for that success check mark where now we've got it figured out. It is a cycle that we keep working through. And so we are looking for success is like that laundry load. You have a laundry load, you get it through the washer into the dryer and put away. You did that, but you're not at all done. And you're not going to be done. You're still going to be doing laundry when you're 65. And in the same way, you're still going to be uh, fighting your own sinful tendencies and repenting all the way through life. So we can get good at it. We can get practice and learn to appreciate it and love it. Uh, but we aren't looking to accomplish it and be done with it in this life. So it's so watching those expectations and recognizing it's like laundry. There, um, and and again, it kind of works the opposite. Where when you're an empty nester, you have less laundry to do. But if you've been repenting and growing all that time, you're probably actually going to be repenting more because the more you do it, the more and more you're aware of your need for it. And that's really a signal of, of growth in grace. So um, that I, I, I think I mixed up my points a little bit in all of that. Um, but Life in that way, sanctification, which is what life is given us for in this as believers in this world. Um, our sanctification, our living life for God's glory, and um, the the end process of sanctification is then we are ready to enjoy God forever in heaven. Uh, we we are learning in baby steps right here and right now, how to do that. Even in the midst of the laundry and the spilled milk, we're taking those steps towards that end, enjoying God forever. Um, it starts here and now. And another way that life is like laundry is that it it is outside our control. So it's not just that it will always be happening. It's always on an endless repeat cycle that we just have to take in stride and keep rolling with and not trying to step out of the cycle or to get on top of it as if we are no longer a part of it or needing to work with it. Like we're, we recognize that we're gonna always be working it. But also life, walking a Christian life, is um, like laundry in the, the, the work that's there to do and um, the whole scenario that we are living through and walking through, it's not just about us. So it's, it's not just about, well, if I can get things under control in this area, then we're good. But just like the kid who's sick in the middle of the night or who goes out and finds a mud puddle unexpectedly, uh, things happen that disturb a regular rhythm of laundry so that we are not actually able to be 100% consistent. If by consistent, we mean the same thing over and over every day or every week. So we tend to think of consistency as being the same every day or the same every week. We set up these rhythms and these patterns, and then as long as we do them, we're good to go. And that is a way of trying to control the situation. And maybe we are successful in controlling ourselves, but it's so that we exert control on other people or the situation. And God is gracious to us when he disrupts those. The, the power grabs is what they can turn out to be, even though we are uh, using vocabulary that maybe is good, 
because consistency is good. But sometimes by consistency, we mean putting in our coins to get the result that we want. We are, we are trying to manipulate the situation or even God to get the result that we want out of it. So when the actions of other people providentially come in and disrupt that, we haven't lost consistency if we have responded appropriately in that situation. We don't need consistency in the sense of the entire rhythm of the day being the same every day or the rhythm of the week being the same every week. We need the consistency of responding in love every time our child comes to us. The consistency of taking care of the problem when it comes up. That's the kind of consistency that we need to be working on rather than the kind of consistency. It's like, okay, everyone needs to be doing the same thing every day. That's how we'll know that we're doing all right. No, you'll know that you're doing all right when you can repent in front of your kids when you sin against them, when you recognize their need for discipleship instead of their need for uh, <laughs> being bottled up, <laughs> or, uh, you know, it's when we are responding to them in the way that we ought consistently that we are that we are appropriately consistent that's the kind of consistency we should be striving for is responding in those fruits of the spirit and the more we can become consistent in the fruits of the spirit that's sanctification and growth and walking with god so god sends these situations to us that do intentionally disrupt our best laid plans. And that's not because our best laid plans were wrong or we did something wrong or there's any kind of necessary, necessarily any blame to go around or failure. Those are providential for God to work in our lives and say, here is the next thing. Respond in patience, respond in joy. So fruit of the spirit, Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. No matter what happens, we are able to respond with those. We just are. Because if we have the fruit of this, if we have the Holy Spirit, those are the things he's working in us. That is the purpose that these things happen so that we can learn how it looks like to respond with those things. And God can grow those. You know, we need his grace to grow those. They, they're not something we gin up for ourselves and they're not something that we have when everything's going our way. We need things to not go our way to find out about our level of patience. But sometimes, you know, we pray for the fruit of the spirit or we pray for patience, maybe particularly. And what that means is, I mean, God will answer that prayer, but it won't look like not needing patience in your day. It'll look like giving you situations where you can practice, grow those skills, grow those muscles. It, it takes actually using it and needing it to have it. So we don't get the fruit of the spirit by smoothing everything out and, and setting everything up so that we don't need them, then it's easy, but it's not real. So consistency isn't about us exerting control over the situation. It's about learning to respond consistently and even repent consistently. That's the real kind of consistency that we need to grow. Um, yeah, it is difficult. <laughs> um, and, and that takes us to 
the, I mean, that's really that my final point, my third point um, has been woven throughout all of this. And I think just like, um, you know, that same pair of socks or whatever goes through the laundry cycle. Um, the fact that they show up a few days later in the laundry hamper again, doesn't mean that we did that we didn't that we didn't clean them or take care of them. And it doesn't mean that we laundered them improperly. And it doesn't mean anything bad or wrong happened. In fact, if they're in, the, quite honestly, if they're in the hamper to be washed, something's something right is happening because that's a pretty big win right there. They're not on the floor or stuffed under a bed. And maybe if we knew they were under the bed and got under there and grabbed them or, you know, told the person who needed to get them to do that, if they wind up in the wash again, nothing, like only good and right things happened. And in the same way, when we find ourselves needing to repent again, I mean, yeah, bad things happen. Sin did happen. We do need to be cleaned up again, but we're in the right place. We, we know that we will sin again, and we aren't supposed to pretend or try to keep ourselves spotless because we know that's, that ends up in just hypocrisy where we're trying to whitewash. The only way to actually get clean is to go through the cycle the repent, rejoice, repeat cycle. So, you know, maybe in heaven, there will not be sweat and body odor <laughs> in speculative territory now. And so the undershirts and the socks might not need to go through the washing machine. But that's not the world that we live in right now. That's not the bodies we live in right now. Right now we need to take care of where we are and who we are and recognize that when we smell the laundry, it's just time, just time to wash it. Not really to lament the fact that it did get dirty, but to just wash it and take care of it, to repent. And sometimes um, feeling bad about something is actually a cover for not repenting. So repenting is different from wallowing or wallowing in regret because the one stays and like is paying attention and stewing on the wrongness or the badness and but it's not our feelings of um recognizing the sin. I mean, that's an element, but we don't stay there. The, those feelings, that recognition are given to us so that we can take them to God in repentance, which is to feel sorry for our sin. So there's definitely a feeling element, but it doesn't stay there. It then turns from sin. You get forgiveness, you get restoration. And when we have that, then we are restored. We are right before God through Christ's blood and his resurrection, his forgiveness. And then we can rejoice. So we know the cycle of repentance is complete when it comes back to gratitude. Um, maybe that's the, the fluffy dryer. <laughs> where, uh, where now we're fresh and clean again. And so we're rejoicing. We are living out lives of gratitude, not because that'll never have to happen again, but because we know that no matter how many times we need it, Christ is there with the forgiveness. The, the detergent never runs out. I don't know. I better stop with the metaphors. <laughs> but we can go through that cycle and always continue running to Christ and getting the grace from him and not from ourselves. And that no matter where we are in life, even if where we are is in the midst of just a whole lot of little chores that don't seem significant or like they're getting us anywhere, 
where we are getting is closer and closer to Christ because we see ourselves more and more clearly. And that turns us to Christ because we see more and more that we aren't who we ought to be and we don't make ourselves who we ought to be. We need Christ. And then we find we go through this repent, rejoice, repeat cycle. And that is uh, right where we need to be. That is giving us the strength and the joy that we need to find significance and joy in hard things, in mundane things, in things that just seem like maybe I should pay somebody to do this for me. <laughs> you know, a lot of times if you look at productivity books, one of the first pieces of advice they'll tell you is to basically outsource, get pay someone else to do the meaningless, menial tasks that you have bigger, more important things to go do. But when we maybe don't think of ourselves so highly <laughs> and we recognize, no, these are actually the responsibilities I've been given. Not that there's anything wrong with getting household help and all of that, but sometimes we it's easy to sink into discontent or think of these things as being things that are beneath us. Even if you hire someone to do house cleaning for you, if you do that because you think it's beneath you, what, how are you going to think of or treat the person you've hired to do it? Like if it's beneath you, that means that the person doing it is beneath you. So we can't come at housework, even if we are getting help as something that is not worth our time. It's something that uh, is good to do. It's service. And uh, no matter what the things are that we are doing, we can do them for God's glory and not our own. And that's really the bottom line, right? Is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And we can do that in laundry and dishes and meal planning. How we do it and how we set up the systems and what systems we set up. Those are details that we... Um, that we can use as tools, but the bottom line is doing those things in such a way that we glorify God and enjoy him while we are doing them. And whatever else, if, if anything is done outside of that, it's in vain. No matter how well it's executed, no matter how many check boxes are being done, um, that doesn't matter. And then the flip side is that it doesn't matter, um, that it does matter that the things are done, right? We are given opportunities to be faithful. And that is where the checklists and the plans and all of that come in, the systems. It's not to bag on systems, but we need to recognize the role and the place of systems and plans and checklists and use them appropriately instead of uh, elevating them to too high of a place in our lives and also to completely disregard them and you know not exercise stewardship where we are in life so we have we need to find balance in um, these things there is not a one size fits all system or plan or checklist. There's not a one size fits all plan even for you in particular. So if you make something that works for a while, it's not gonna work for forever. It's not a success point for forever. Maybe it's temporary because we will be stretched. God will send us new things to continue to grow us in sanctification. So our hope is not in the system or the plan or the checklist. Our hope's in Christ. And everything that happens 
can lead us there. They can all be means and tools to grow us in sanctification. So I hope that that will help you as you are maybe doing your laundry right now or getting dinner ready or maybe about ready to call the kids in for EHAP to clean that all of these things are not about the end result, but about loving God and loving others as we do them, as we walk in faithfulness and steward the resources and the vocations that God has given us. And so, um, put this. So one way that we do that um, together, and one way we can continue to grow in these things together is um, by getting a good handle on the work that needs to be done in our own lives, not try to copycat someone else's system. I'm like, well, because it works, this, this list works for this person. And so if I just print off her list, then I'll get a handle on it. It's like, it almost never works that way. And part of that is because it's not about just getting the work done. It's about growing and it's about sanctification and it's about wrapping our own heads around our own responsibilities, which is going to look different from someone else's. And it's gonna look different for us at different times in our life. And so a big part of fulfilling your responsibilities and walking in faithfulness is wrapping your own head around your own responsibilities. So um, I do have courses and materials and all that that help you wrap your own head around your own situation right now and your own attitude, the way you're thinking about your work and how to use whatever situation you're in as kind of that springboard to uh, repent, rejoice, repeat. So everything that we do in Simply Convivial, the blog, the podcast, we also have a membership that includes courses and a private community with accountability, podcast troubleshooting sessions like this one every week, except it's a little bit more tactical and nitty gritty uh, for the troubleshooting sessions. But um, that's what we do in Simply Convivial membership. So I just put up the link there. It's the green link that says, join us to repent, rejoice, repeat. And if you want to um, join other people kind of on this bandwagon who get it, who are like-minded and where the accountability is not only on getting the stuff done and achieving some kind of organized state, but it's actually about organizing our attitudes and our responses to God and to our kids and to our husbands, our family, our community, um, to, to help us order our affections and order our responsibilities and our priorities and our checklists even to the priorities um, that God has given us, which the first of which is our sanctification is our growth in godliness, then you will love Simply Convivial. And you can check that out. This link is just to find more information and see the courses that are there. You can see what they're, all the lessons are called, all the different courses. There's also a chat community that is, uh, it's kind of like Slack, if you've ever used that. It's not like Facebook. It's just a chat, kind of like this chat here on the sidebar, except there are lots of channels and it's easier to scroll back <laughs> and read previous messages, but it's private and um, there are all kinds of topics going on. And um, yeah, membership is the place where we just take the next step and um, are helping spur one another on to love and good works. That's what we tried to do there. So you can check that out by clicking the green button there. If you liked this and you want more of it, that's where to get it. And until next time, repent, rejoice, repeat.